Hi, welcome to the Scribe Studio. My name is Mark Walker, and I'm here with Brendan Peterson. Hey, Mark. How you doing, Brendan? I'm doing good. All right. Well, thanks for spending some more time with us. Uh, in a recent release, uh, actually, it was the March 2014 release of Scribe Online, we added some new capability around the way you can trigger your integration jobs to run. So before that release, it was, it was either on a, uh, an on-demand basis yep. where you clicked a run button, or it was on a scheduled basis like it was polling. Right. Well, we added some great new features in that March 2014 release around event-based processing. And so what we want to do in this video is help you have a good understanding of what event-based processing is. We're not going to show you everything about how to configure it. We really just want to help you understand what it is and what its capability is. So Brendan yep. has prepared some material for us. He's going to take us through event-based processing. Perfect. So, so basically, event-based processing, like Mark said, it is... Uh, departure from the old Scribe Online where it was a scheduled, it ran, it looked for something you know that happened in that application. Right. This is more so that the application is going to tell us something happened. Okay. Um, so on here, we're basically going to cover a quick four-stop four, four shop. Um, <laughs> what it is, we're going to specifically talk about request response. So there are two different types of event-based processing. Right. Um, we're going to specifically focus on request response just because it's more of a broader application base that we can do that okay. with. Um, we're going to touch on the message based one, but we're not going to spend a lot so of time. So we've got there. message based and we've got request response. Yep. Okay. And then um, we're basically going to talk about you know what does it do, what are some use cases, and then how can you learn more? As oh. we always want to you know impart more knowledge onto you guys. Of course. So let's start off with a definition of event based processing by Scribe's definition. Yep. So event based processing, um, like we said before, it runs it based upon something happening. Okay. So that application is telling us that that data changed or that this event occurred and it's time to go run that data All right. versus the scheduled one is saying, hey, did something change? No? Okay. Did something change? Right. No? Good. Okay. So Sounds we're a not less doing efficient. that. Yeah, we're not, it's yeah. a constant back and forth. Right. This is really that we're in a waiting state, ready for something to come to us okay. and then once it gets to us, we're going to move that data the way All we right. need to. So what that really means to like, to the general populace, um, we call it near real time just because Real time is a loaded term, so some people right. it's, you it means know, something some, different to everybody. Exactly. Right. So yeah. we're kind of saying it's you know it's a matter of seconds that this thing's going to move across. Okay. Um, but basically, it's going to initiate that request immediately within sub seconds. It's going to call the scribe. Okay. Say hey, go do something. But then if we're having a long running integration, that right. might take a few seconds to okay. you know, give a result set back. All right. Um, some of the things that this helps you with. So this is where you know this event based processing. We kind of alluded to it earlier with, you know, hey, did you do something? No. Did you do anything yet? No. Um, <laughs> still no. Yeah, still no. It's a lot of chatter. So right. to cut down on the chatter, this event-based processing helps, and it's in two forms. One is rows processed. So I don't have to go look for stuff all the time. I don't have to pull back a lot of extra data. So, you know, I care about contacts changing, but only if these three fields change. Okay. The other 15, I don't care about. Oh, okay. So... With the way the scheduled integration goes, it's usually off of a bonafide stamp, so it's that high watermark. Right. Um, that produces a lot of extra rows sometimes. Right. So on that polling interval, you, you're checking to see if anything's changed, but you don't have the granularity to check if the specific fields change. Exactly. You're checking on the time and date stamp that's on the row. Yeah. So if some field you don't care about tracking has changed, you're still checking, you're still maybe getting those changes and processing data when exactly. maybe you don't need to. Exactly. Okay. So this gives you the ability to have a really granular control over what you're processing. Right. Um, and then with that, it's also API calls. So Salesforce is a great example. Salesforce has a limited number of API calls you get per day. So okay. if you're constantly you know, going to check if something's happened, that's an API call every time. Right. So if I'm checking a thousand times a day and I get no data, it's still a thousand API calls that okay. I'm going through. So right. this lets us, instead of going checking, we're simply waiting and saying, hey, Salesforce, let me know when you're ready for me to run. Right. Give me the data you want me to run, and we're good to go. Right, so there's not so much back and forth going on. Exactly. You, you don't need to be doing that. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right, so, so we've alluded to the two types. Right, two um, types. The two types are request response, which, again, we're going to cover um, a lot more in depth. But we're going to start with message-based integration and okay. message-based message -based event-based processing. It's a mouthful, but yes. it, it's, it's we it's have much a few clearer. of those, don't we? We do. <laughs> so basically, what this means is uh, right now it's tied directly to Salesforce. So okay. the connector for Salesforce supports this message-based processing. Um, not all connectors do. So right now, that's the only one for our first initial pass of this. Only the Salesforce connector supports this message-based. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So what it means is that 
if I build a message-based integration, I set up set scribe, I tell it which entity I care about. Right. So is it a case, is it a contact, is it an account? And then I build my integration the same way I would in scribe. I drag and drop, I map my fields back and forth. All right. Basically what we're saying is that Salesforce is going to give us that entity. So it's going to give us a contact. How it gives that to us is by outbound messaging. So Salesforce has this feature that has been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, any of you, you insight guys who have touched you know, the Salesforce publisher before, um, in the past it's been a bit of a uh, setup problem. Right. So you've had to stand up a website, you've had to do a lot of extra work. Right. This takes all that away, so it does it for you. So right. basically it gives you an endpoint, it gives you a URL to hit, and then you just input that into the outbound message, Right. build a workflow around it, and you're good to go. So you build the workflow in Salesforce, configure an outbound message in Salesforce, separately in Scribe online, you configure uh, an endpoint yep. that you have to take that custom URL for that endpoint and put that into your Salesforce workflow and outbound message, and that's how it gets the information to exactly. Scribe online. Exactly. But I think the really cool thing about this is that you can set up uh, a, a REST-based web service, like an endpoint, without having to write any code. That's all user can, now we're not going to demo it. Uh, we're not going to demo that no, one not going to demo that here, no. But you'll we'll probably in some other episode we'll demo some more details about that. But it's pretty cool though because you can you can stand up um, an endpoint without having to write any code on the Scribe yeah, online it's, side. It's two and minutes. Scribe hosts that endpoint for you. Yeah, which is really nice. So it's there's a, no web server that you have to set up or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, no IIS, that's none pretty, of that stuff. That's pretty powerful. So that is pretty cool, but the request response is where we're going to spend a little more time talking about today. Okay. And really, what that is, is that we're going to build an integration inside of Scribe. Same thing, drag and drop. Right. We're going to do the mappings the same way we always would. And that's going to get exposed to the world as a REST endpoint. So you're going to basically get the same thing. You're going to get an endpoint URL that you can then write some custom code around pass some JSON off to, and initiate the run of a job from any application that exists in the world. But you write the custom code in whatever the originating application exactly. is. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So let's say, for let's imagine, if we will, we want to do an integration with, let's say we have Marketo. Yep. So we have a connector for Marketo, easy enough to do. The other end, it's some homegrown application. It's been around the auto industry for 20 years. It's okay. an old AS400, but it can be internet facing. Okay. I could actually write a little bit of, of code inside of there, whether it's JavaScript, you know, C Sharp, whatever, to call out to that REST endpoint, pass off a JSON you know, package, yes. and it would actually yeah. initiate the run of a job. So I could pick up a package of data from that application, pass it off to Scribe, it'll move it into the connector that we have, mm -hmm. and then bring back a response. And that response can be success or failure. Hey, okay. I added it or I didn't add it. Or okay. it could even be, I wanted to go look for data. So if I have... I have a cloud-based application, I have Salesforce, and I want to be able to, when a user goes to an account screen, fetch back some information from Onyx. Okay. So, you know, I don't have an Onyx connector, right. but I have a local agent, it can use ODBC, you oh, know, I, I can get yeah. to that data. Right. I could actually use that to call down, pass it off an account name, and bring back a whole mm -hmm. bunch of other information, mm -hmm. and populate it on the screen for that user. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with it. It's really it's out of the norm of what Scribe used to do. Scribe was always about just data-driven integration. Right. This is really around, you know, I want to pull data back. I want to pop it in an iframe. I want to put it on a form. Mm -hmm. I want that to happen based upon some user action that's occurring. Right. Pretty good. So are there some high-level use cases, or could you describe a few high-level use cases where people I know you just did some, but I think yeah, you no, probably have a few more. I definitely do. Right. So the general, like, what you do with this, with REST, um, this request response, right. You're allowing that integration to be called via REST web service. I mean, that, that is the number one takeaway is that this is no longer polling. This is no longer on a schedule. This is out there in the world as a REST endpoint. You're going to write some code and you're going to invoke it. Now, what that does, the sky's the limit. Right. So a couple of things we talked Any, about. Anything you could do with Scribe Online. Exactly. Exactly. And the, the two that we kind of bring up here, which are the, you know, the outside the element of Scribe, right. um, is embedded integration. So okay. if I have my own, you know, I'm a startup, I happen to partner with Scribe, I want to embed some integration into my UI. Right. In my UI, I could have a button that says, you know, integrate with CRM. And they hit that, it calls out to a Scribe REST web service, does some actions, and brings back data, or pushes data across to some other system. Okay. So I can embed that into my applications, or I can allow for this kind of iframe integration. Now, where this comes really is important and kind of cool is mm -hmm. like Salesforce. 
Salesforce charges for storage. So I might not want to bring all my exact target send metrics over. Uh, I see. I might want to go to Mark's record, hit a button that says, hey, show me what's going on in exact target, and then have Scribe go fetch all that data, bring it back, put it into an iframe so it's not persisted. Uh, okay. So it's only there visually, so I can't report on it, but I can see it. Yeah, that's a pretty big difference from the way that people traditionally have used Scribe yeah. migration tools sort of thing. So in this case, just to be clear about it, instead of actually storing that data, persisting it yep. in both systems, you're just fetching that data when you need to and just putting it on the screen temporarily so the user can see what they need to see. And then as soon as you leave that screen, that data, is, it's, just, it's gone. Yeah, right? vanishes. It's still in the original source system, but it's just not here on the Salesforce exactly. side. So again, like a cost-saving tip. Yeah. Or yep. capability, I should say. Yeah, it's, it's a handy, it's a handy little feature. All right, great. So I've actually got a couple of things I want to show, you know, Mark and the world. I want to show you guys a couple <laughs> of uh, real use cases. Terrific. So I'm going to show you the first two. On um, the third is really just another use case you could do with it. Okay. And it's going to be fetching some data based on a form loading or changing inside a CRM. So that's All the right. first one. Where basically, as a user puts in a new count data, I want to see: Do I already know about this person? Is it Scribe? Do I have Scribe in my ERP system? So bring me back some information mm -hmm. there. Uh, the next one is talking about getting data out of Marketo, uh, which okay. I'll go in a little more detail, but they've got these cool things called webhooks, okay. calls out to a REST web service, and I can initiate that based on whatever criteria I want. So it's mm -hmm. basically following through a path of workflow, saying, hey, it's ready to go to CRM. All right, push it across. And the last one that we'll talk about is just basically hitting a button, saying, hey, integrate now, and then we're good to go. Careful you point that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll start off with the CRM side. So basically what I've got is inside of CRM um, 2013, I've built a customization on the form that is going to go in here. And what we'll see is that there's going to be an ERP feed that's going to come up and say it's searching. So it's waiting for me to interact with this form to tell it what I want to search okay. for. So I'm going to go ahead and cheat and put in... Oh, I'm not going to be able to do that. Let's... Seal that data again. I don't like <laughs> typing, so I'm going to try to copy that. It's going to pull from an ERP system in SQL. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put in a, a value that I know is going to be there. Okay. So, so before you do that, have, we should point out what's going on on the screen. Yeah. So down here, this whole ERP section is all locked fields. I can't create it. I can't change those right. values. So it's read only from the CRM side. Yep. And on the form load and on this field change, it's going to allow that scribe integration to get called. So when you tab off of this field, yeah, when I tab off that, it's going to call it to the scribe integration. Yep. That scribe integration is going to go check SQL. It's going to tell me whether it found that data or not, and then it's going to pop it on this screen telling me that, it, in this case, it found it. So I can see the phone number, the credit limit, credit okay. on hold, email, and website. Now, this is not an iframe type of example. So this data is being persisted in the CRM system? Or it's being persisted, it? but this is kind of interesting. So if I save that, okay, save that guy, when the form reloads, it researches. So every time I oh, open this, it it's going to pull it back. It. Exactly. So you always have the latest information. Exactly. Not so exactly real time, but pretty close. I mean, a couple seconds, it yeah. can pull back. I like so, that. So yeah, it's pretty pretty cool, and it's really just a form, an on change and an on load customization of added CRM. Right. Okay. So that's the first one where it's you know this you could imagine could be an iframe. This you can imagine is anything on that form that you want to populate. Mm -hmm. You can push that into that that application. Okay. The other one is Marketo. So in Marketo, I've got this idea of a webhook. And basically, what I'm going to do is say, I only want to push that data to CRM when the user has filled out this specific form. Um, and basically, it's going to call that webhook and it's going to change our lead score. Mm -hmm. So I can define this. I can define 15 of these. I can have one of these. It's really dependent upon what I want to do. And so what I will do to show nothing on my sleeves, <laughs> is I've got my set of leads. You even have your sleeves rolled up. <laughs> I know, so I'm, I'm very truthful here. Um, you can see my name is not in this list. Okay. So to save you my typing, I've already put my name into that lead form that I'm capturing. Okay. And I'm going to submit that. So what that does automatically is it pushes that data into Marketo because it's obviously to form in Marketo. So I can see it's here now. Um, I've got my name, my company, my email, mm -hmm. the whole, the whole mm -hmm. nine yards. What it's also doing is it's going to change my lead score and it's going to call that webhook, which that webhook calls a scribe integration, passes across this lead data. So first name, last name, email. Okay. Pushes it to my scribe integration. That integration is going to add it into CRM. And then it's going to bring back some status information to my lead. So if I take a look at that lead specifically, 
I'm going to see it brought back the CRM GUID and the fact that it has been synced. Mm -hmm. So now I can go look in CRM and say, well, Brendan, are you lying to me? <laughs> I'll go in here, go into leads, and I'll be able to see that Brendan's been brought across. He's a new lead from Marketo, and I can see that it's from the webhook integration. Okay. So it automatically does all that for me, and I can pick and choose when I want to use that. I might want to use it in one set of integrations. I might want to use it across the board. I might want to add that into 15 different smart campaigns. Okay. So it calls out that same endpoint, passes across the data, but it's all manageable within that Marketo app versus having to go back to the Scribe app every time and create new integrations from scratch. Right. Pretty neat. Yeah. So that's the, uh, the two I had built. Again, that third one that we talked about here, that it could be based on the sync with a button, yep. so I can hit a button inside of a form. Okay. Same principle applies, whether it's a form loading, whether it's a button pushing. I can configure how I want that integration to fire based upon something happening in that originating application. All right. So uh, is there anything else you want to talk about those use cases? Because I have a question that we didn't rehearse that I want to ask. Yeah, you. no, no, go for it. <laughs> okay. So what, what might, I'm thinking about somebody watching our video and thinking, <laughs> can I, could I do, actually do this myself? And to me, you're a, you're a very skilled person, <laughs> but you're not as technical as a developer is. No. So like help, help the viewers understand like how they might be enabled to do this because I'm sure they might think it's cool. Well, we hope you think it's cool, <laughs> but how would you actually do it? Yeah, yeah, I mean, the way I did this is Google. I mean, it's really, it's, it's that pathetic and it's that simple, but it's- <laughs> Google did I, it for you? Basically, I mean, it, <laughs> I Googled how to write JavaScript to call out to a REST web service. Okay. Because I had never done any of this before. I'd always right. use Scribe Insight or online, right, and I could right, do right. things that way. This gave me the ability to write that little bit of code. Mm -hmm. So I would basically go out and Google it. Um, there's a couple of websites that we found that help you build responses, build replies, right. you know, work with that. And I just tested it to the point where I could call it from some external testing application and get it to call Scribe and get it to work. Okay. And then I could plug that same piece of code into whatever I was really working with. So it was right. Marketo Webhook, whether it was a CRM you know, form customization. Right. Um, I could just plug that in. But it's forgiving enough that there's a lot of, of troubleshooting capability within that that solution okay. that you can work with. But yeah, it was really just, I mean, I'm not a developer by any stretch of the imagination, but I could find what I needed by just trolling so, through the web. So let me ask you another scary unrehearsed question. Is is there a way that we could share some of the, like a, the code that you wrote or the script that you wrote yep. with other people that they could see an example, like maybe in that um, scribe and line resource place that we have? Yeah, we'll definitely put it there. Okay. And um, you know, it's a good thing you asked that because I'm planning on uh, doing another video about this. Good. Um, that's going to be, it's going to be a deeper dive into this. So okay. it's going to be showing code, right. showing resources I use. So it's going to be a little more. So as usual, I'm jumping ahead. No, it's good. It's going to be, it's a teaser actually. <laughs> okay. This is what we're doing. It's going to basically, right. if this was not technical enough, we're going to have another one where I'm just going right. to, I'm going to geek out for a little while right. and let you guys know everything I did. But we could save you some of the Googling or yeah, per, we'll put our, perhaps duck, duck going that you might be doing yeah. or whatever, or bang, whatever you want to use uh, by providing you some of the resources that Brendan used. Yeah, in absolutely. Preparing this demonstration. Okay. Absolutely. Anything else you want to go over? No, I think this is, I mean, it's, it's a high lob on this. Um, there's a lot of capability here. I mean, you guys could probably imagine things that we can never think of that this is really an area of scribe that people have been asking for for years. Right. We've never been able to do with something like Insight because we can't wrap Insight around a web service. It's just, it is an application that runs and does what it does. Right. Very powerful, but this gives us a, a whole brand new set of capabilities that we've never had in the past. So I think this will be interesting over the next you know months to years mm -hmm. to see how people use this because I think we're going to find that people are going to build a lot more interesting integrations with this than we ever dreamed of. Terrific. Okay, well, Brendan, thank you very much. Yeah, for, absolutely. I really appreciate you spending the time, and I hope you folks do too. And thank you for spending some time with us in the Scribe Studio, and we hope you come back for another episode and learn more tips and tricks from our Scribe experts. <laughs>